Welcome to Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host. I have my extended version of Greater Brockton because I have Gary, Gary Leonard back. Yeah, Good please don't Gary. call me Gary Keith. They no, do that in the paper you know now. What? You know what? I almost did. <laughs> Only because I was just talking to him about something to do with the planning board. Okay. So, um, and I've known you a lot, way longer than I've known Gary Keith. But a um, lot of exciting stuff happening in downtown Brockton and all throughout Brockton. That is so, correct. Before I ask you anything I'm not supposed to reveal or that's top secret that hasn't finished, what's new, what's latest, what, 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 what can we talk about? Well, uh, I pretty much concentrated myself down to the Campello section of Brockton. Mm -hmm. I had to actually take a, a certain area, and I'm taken from Brookside Avenue going northerly to Nelson Street. So I'm cornerstone between Trinity Baptist Church and the uh, First Evangelical Lutheran Church. Okay. Um, I've asked these uh, residents, I've asked these property owners, and I've asked these business owners to engage like we did in downtown. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know downtown, we had the strategy uh, kick off last night. Yeah. Um, that's the final phase. Just because of all the engagement, we finally came up with a 10, 15 year plan. Mm -hmm. And this is what we're trying to do in Camp Pello as well. So we have about 30 people that we've contacted that we've met probably close to a dozen times now. Mm -hmm. We have, uh, hi uh, the BRA has hired Narrowgate Architects um, out of Boston uh, who are doing the guidelines for the design of the facades for um, the, prop uh, the property owners that are interested in this Camp Pello area, which we have quite a few people interested. And we're going to try to make this a walkable, livable, comfortable area, um, like a village type setup. And that is incremental work. Uh, we take a block at a time, and we just look at the property. Um, we're introducing outside dining, which will be coming up very shortly in an ordinance change. And um, you're gonna see a lot of people responding to it, and it's gonna create that vibrancy mm -hmm. that we're looking for in this Campello. Pocket parks, roadways that aren't really, they're side roadways off of Main Street, they're running between uh, Maine and Montello and Maine and Warren that are not used much at all. Actually, the roads are in deplorable condition. Uh, we've talked to the property owners in those areas and we showed them a few designs that we've come up with, uh, with a lot of greenery, a lot of flowers, um, great curb appeal where we won't see many cars going up and down the street, but it'll be a very walkable area. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna try the mixed use in Campello as well. Okay. So there's going to be a lot of stuff going on here in Camp Pello. Uh, we are erecting a new building at uh, 1050 Main Street. Uh, it was the former address of Maylou's Furniture Store. Had a fire about nine years ago. Um, we are, uh, the owner is putting up another building with commercial on the first floor and residential on the second floor. This is our trying out of the new concept of mixed use. Now is that the building, tell me exactly where that is, um, um, it's, it's on, it's, I mean it's Main Street. It's Main Street. But what's next to it, what's adjacent to that building? Well, uh, what's next to it is Rogers Pest Control. Okay. Um, get your ghetto stuff here type. Oh thing. yeah, yeah the one that was just that in the paper. In the paper. Okay. We, 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 we will have a conversation with that owner very soon. Okay. But, uh, okay. In the meantime, we have a brand new building that's going up just north of that building. Uh, this other building that burnt down used to abut the same property. Sure, okay. Um, so um, this is a very big void in that area that is now going to be occupied. Also, you take an address of the uh, corner of Grove in Maine. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that was uh, used to be the former home of Shoe City Auto, who has moved up to Route 28 on the West Bridgewater Brockton line. Uh, Mr. Zimmerman, who runs a class act business up there, but he's had this property here, it's at an ideal location, and there's been a lot of shown of interest and I'm looking at a lot of drawings, and that uh, whole corner is gonna be developed. And it's a bigger lot than people think. Yeah. Uh, because it goes in back of all those houses down Grove Street. It sure does, yeah. And uh, there's a parcel in a building on Grove Street that goes with this property. Mm -hmm. That will be the in and out, so be, uh, that will help with the traffic flow. Now the BRA is doing a really nice job on the old Campello co-op and change the community bank. Well, you and I are always BHA. call it Campello. It's BHA. That's what I meant. Not yeah. the BRA. Too many, too many, too many acronyms. Okay. <laughs> Boxing Housing true. Authority. Those are going to be their administrative offices. Yes. Yes. There'll be offices in there, 
and um, they are, are one of the uh, new owners that are considering making that little area where the trees are a little pocket park mm -hmm. so people can have their lunches there and of course we'll put a nice restaurant in there where we already have the Italian kitchen and Cape Cod Cafe but right. of course they'll be able to you know walk to work like I said a walkable livable comfortable safe area um, you will see a lot of uh, B cops down there um, we're, we're going to make this something that it used to be, which was a very colorful, um, very vibrant area. Uh, the sidewalks will be taken care of. Of course, you know that due to the planting of the trees, the roots have erupted uh, the sidewalks, so it's become kind of uh, a hazard. Uh, we're looking at that for some in infrastructure work to be done. Uh, we can't do it all at once. Right. This will be incremental, but it is going to get done. So. You might look at it today, but three years from now, you're going to say, wow, you wouldn't believe what this used to look like. Mm -hmm. And then we can just forget about it. it sounds good to me. You know how to say it, forget about yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> now, the, the event where they unveiled the, the plan to the public, it, its next stop is to the city council. That the is city correct. The city council um, approves of that plan. Yes. Uh, most of the city council have been well-versed on the plan. Uh, they're very familiar with it, and I believe that there's going to be a very strong yes uh, for this project. Uh, it, it makes perfectly good sense. Uh, it's the first time they've seen an engagement of the community the way they have for downtown, but it just shows you that they've been waiting for something to happen for an awful long time. Well, if you go back and look at the plan, there's a whole bunch of plans within the plan. Yes. I, I, I interviewed the mayor. I did a special edition of One North Main, which will also be airing probably simultaneously with this. but talked to the mayor and he said all those plans sat on the shelf and collected dust and did. some there were maybe an aspect or two out of each plan that might have come to fruition but now it's kind of all tied together it is and uh, it, it, the thing is to activate you, we can have discussion we can have studies we can do all this for years and years and years but until you implement a program or start it going people cannot get a vision and they get tired of hearing the rhetoric I mean, redundancy, I mean, this is all they keep hearing of what's going to happen, but when you go 10 years down the line and you don't see anything happening, you get pretty discouraged. So now they see things happening in a very short period of time, and like we had a lot to go on. Like I said, you said, a lot of these plans sat on the shelf, they've just been elaborated on, and now they're going to be implemented, and that's due to the cooperation that they have with the property owners and the engagement they have with everybody in downtown. And that's what we're looking for in Camp Pello as well. Mm -hmm. B21 is a very big, strong uh, person behind this. They're pushing this all the way. Between B21, the mayor's office, and the BRA, this is all going to get done. Okay. Um, Corcoran building, things are happening over there. Well, I know uh, we've talked about yep, it. Yep, permits are being taken out. I mean, uh, it's a slow process, but it's a process. And uh, you will see probably the construction down there probably July or August will be starting the construction. And that is a big building. That it is. is a huge building. It is. It is. And it is going to be mostly um, residential. Okay. Um, I don't know if you remember, but Dave Elman used to always mm -hmm. buy the properties that were most unlikely to have residents in. Um, so he took a chance and he built one um, over there right next to the Enterprise Club mm -hmm. on uh, uh, Clinton Street. Yes. And um, before he knew it, he had a waiting list mm -hmm. of people who wanted to purchase, yep. not rent. We're talking about purchasing. Right. And um, he found that to be a gold mine. So that's what he looked for. What everybody else didn't want, he wanted. Mm -hmm. And he made it work. And I believe that that's exactly what's going to happen uh, at the Cochrane building. And then if you go further up Montella Street, you know, the, uh, the old yard. Mm -hmm. Well, um, the Coley brothers have purchased that property. Um, they don't need all of that property. Uh, so, and I just saw the sign go up today for sale mm -hmm. on that land. So now we have more open space there. Um, we have to make that vibrant, and that might be another opportunity for residential housing. It's not zoned for it now, right? But under the comprehensive plan with Rob May, if this fits into the picture, that's probably what you might see there. Well, it just seems going to all of these events, like I always do. The pieces are all being put together you know, different parts of the city forming together for the for the good of the whole city. For the good, that's okay? right. Because I'm sure once you get done with Campello or incrementally, like you said, 
Montello is the other part. I'm hitting Montello. Okay. That's my, I live doesn't matter Montello. that you have the word downtown in your title. It has nothing to do with it. Well, actually, right? downtown's not in my title. I'm oh, Main Streets. Main Streets, Main Streets. That's right. Main You're right. Streets You're not the manager. downtown manager. Right. You used to have the downtown So manager. now what's Main Streets? Well, that would tell me. Route 27, 123, Route 28. True. You know, I mean, yep. it can go yep. on and on and on. So like I say, um, Boston has 22 Main Street managers. Yeah. Brockton has one. And that's why I'm doing things uh, a little incrementally, um, rebranding uh, certain parts of the city, like Hyde Park is to Boston. Right. We have Camp Hello to Brockton. Right. So we have our own logo, our own branding for Camp Hello. We will do the same thing with downtown, and we'll do the same thing with Montello mm -hmm. until our image and our perception has just taken over to say, okay, that's all part of Brockton. But right now we're going to brand our sections. Uh, we're going to make them their own and we're gonna make them destinations. Now you're talking about community input. The event yesterday had tons of people. That was packed in the Enzo Flats. Is that Enzo what Flats, yes. Yeah, I'm just making sure. Yes. Nice artwork there, nice food. There's food from Vincenti's over there. Great spread, um, everything. You know, and, and people were excited. You got artwork right there, you can, you know, just. Did you notice everybody there had a big smile on their face? They did, they did. Because things are happening. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to go to the, all these events like you do. Uh, I've been going to them for years, and I've never seen a crowd so happy in all my life that things finally are coming together, and they've all been part of it. They all have their footprint on it, mm -hmm. and that's what's important. I did something to help my city. This is what we did. So somebody wants to come here from outside. This is on TV here, but they might come, turn on the TV, be with a friend and a neighbor. They're sitting in a living room, and... This comes on because we've put it on a lot. What would they do? Where would they go? How would they find out what the opportunities are? Well, it's very simple. Um, on the website, they can go to uh, the Brockton City Brockton website. City of Brockton. And uh, once they get on that website, it'll give you all the activities for the month. You can go to the Chamber of Commerce, mm -hmm. their website. It will give you all of not just their activities, but all the activities happening throughout the city, uh, like Summerfest and, and, and other festivals that we have, the downtown Brockton Museum, um, when he has his 10-day um, excursion downtown as well, car shows. It gives you all this information. So you really have two sites you can go to. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now, we're in the making of Brockton 21st Century is making a site as well. And on that site, um, it's going to give you even more information, like uh, uh, commercial properties that could be available for mm -hmm. um, vendors, uh, uh, entrepreneurs to come. Uh, it's going to tell all about the incubator that we're going to be putting on Frederick Douglass. That, okay, you brought me right to Oh, that. did I open up a can no, of No, that thing. one's very exciting because, first of all, I mean, I haven't missed a meal. Okay, <laughs> so, but a restaurant incubator on Frederick. I, see, I remember when it was High Street. So did I. It was bustling. I mean, you had Central Music was there. Yes. And I played an instrument from fourth to trumpet eighth. Trumpet, 27 years. I did trumpet from fourth grade to eighth grade, and then Vinny scared me away. <laughs> My son made it through all four years with Vinny because he does a great job, but I was not as disciplined. I was the first trumpet, and I couldn't have, I didn't want to be in the marching band, to be honest with you. I didn't want to get up that early on a Saturday. That was what ended my musical career. But I was at Central all the time. Right. There were all sorts of businesses across the street. Oh, There's sure. so many storefronts over in that area. So restaurants, see, Lynn did a lot with restaurants, especially ethnic restaurants. Sure. And yeah, so I think Lowell. that's Brockton's strength. Lowell, when I went to one of the conventions, I sat out on the street in Lowell at an Italian restaurant. I don't know what it was called. And I had dinner, and it was nice weather because the convention, I think, was in June. So mm -hmm. it was nice weather. That'll be great for Brockton. I know Lynn Smith and some of those folks have done these little pop-up, you know, restaurant and opportunities. They and they work. They, and they, they work do and draw. They draw. Yeah. But that will be exciting. I mean, you look at the, the old Kresge building. It looks like things might be starting to happen here. I know the city, yep, the city just took the, the, Grayson. the, the Grayson, Grayson and also the building at 19 Main. Yes. The gray yeah. building, yeah. which... I forget what Washburn was. First, parish, first, first parish. parish Church. Okay. Yeah. So things, look, what about the White Building sitting next to the Rockland Trust? That's the 26 Baywood School building. Street. 26 School Street. Anything well, going on there? Well, you know, we, it's in conversation, but uh, I'll give you a little uh, interpretation of what we would like to see there. Yeah. 
Uh, we're looking at that bill, and it is a historic building. Yeah. I like to save the facade. Yeah. The uh, inside of the building is pretty much um, been open to the weather. Yeah. And probably is not salvageable. But the front of the building is, and that's the historic part of it, the okay. windows and the facade. Um, I like to uh, raise the back half of the building and all brass microbrewery with a cigar bar attached. Cool. You want to talk about creating vibrancy? Mm -hmm. Nothing creates more vibrancy than that. Mm -hmm. And what better name than the champion of champions, the champion beer. There you go. And um, all I'm looking for is some entrepreneur uh, to come up with some sort of re re uh, recipe and I'll find them an investor and a developer and we'll put it all together and collaborate and get this thing going. And that's what we see for 26 School Street. So in order for them to get all this information, call you. Please. Okay. Please. Phone number? 508-586-0021, uh, hence the name B21, extension 115. Okay. So uh, the, my cell number, which is 508 802-2315. Okay. Um, I'll call Mike Lindine. He's got me on his cell phone. Absolutely. <laughs> can do that. Not a, not a problem. Okay, so um, I didn't think of main streets quite in the broad definition you did. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you think about main streets, that could be Oak, that could be Oak Street. That could be West Chestnut Street. Belmont Street. Belmont Street. Um, yep. Now West there's Chestnut. a new restaurant opening over right in front of the high school where the old Friendlies was. Yes, a Mexican, Mexican restaurant. restaurant. Yes. I just saw that. Yep. Uh, I yeah. wish them well because unfortunately since Friendlies left it's been two or three restaurants and let's hope this one catches on. Well, you know, everybody seems to think they have a good idea mm -hmm. and it probably is a good idea but where to put that idea is very important as well. Yeah. Now you're in front of a high school that has uh, uh, 4,500 students and faculty. Right. So who would you cater to? Right. I would cater to them. Right. Nobody has done that mm -hmm. at all that's ever purchased this property. Right. So they're not marketing themselves to the people they should be marketing themselves to. There is a strategy to everything. Mm -hmm. And unless you have your own and maybe ask for advice from professional people, um, I wouldn't just go and throw all my life savings into a project like this without doing a little due diligence, knowing who I'm catering to, knowing the volume of business that I'm entitled to. Mm -hmm. Well, you and I know you can go to the chamber and go to SCORE and their Service Corps Retired Executives, and they will help you put together a business plan, uh, marketing, all sorts of different things. And the best part of it is... Don't cost them a dime. It doesn't cost them anything. That's right. There's a business assistance center right there That's right. built in with booklets and pamphlets and internet access and everything. Yeah, you got mass uh, development. You, I mean, everybody has a, a piece of the action down there. We even have a, a person in the finance business down there that we took out of San Diego, California, mm -hmm. that has the lowest rates that we don't, we haven't seen down here. He even has hard money that's less than 10%, that's like 8%. That mm -hmm. means when you can't get a mortgage, he gets you one, but you pay a little more in interest. Here, you're talking 14 to 18%, and he's talking 8 to 9%, 10% mm -hmm. difference. I mean, you have it all at, now, Old Colony Planning Council is also in the same building. Right. Uh, they do all the infrastructure work. They do all the studies. They're doing a Route 28 study right now. Belmont Street, that, this is all their work. Mm -hmm. You gotta understand, this is all their work. West Elm Street, I mean, this is what they do. And if you wanna get educated on what's coming up in the very near future, take an hour, go down there, see Pat. Pat runs the show over there. And um, he's more than happy to talk with you and give you as much information as you want, as every department is in that building, as well as City Hall right across the street. Speaking of that, it's gotten easier with permitting and different things like that. It was something that Mayor Carpenter talked about before he was mayor. Yes. Yep. Um, and I believe I, when I did the interview with him, he talked about it's going to get, it's going to be even more enhanced. There's going to be yes. more opportunities for people to click on things and you know, get permits and do stuff like that, you must be able to tell me what it all means. Well, uh, if you, let's say you're looking for a license. I don't care what kind of license it is. If you're looking for a dog license, a liquor license, uh, or any kind of license, you go onto the City of Brockton's website. It'll give you each department, you put on licensing, and it gives you all the licensings and the permits and the instructions that you need to do. Mm -hmm. So if you're going for a liquor license and you're a nonprofit organization, it tells you right there. 
uh, liquor license, all alcoholic, or liquor license, uh, malt or in wine. You click on the one that you're going to do if you're going to have a benefit or a fundraiser, and it gives you the application, and it gives you exactly each step you have to take in order to get this through. And it doesn't get any easier than that. You don't have to go up to City Hall and go to this department, that department, jump around, don't need to do that anymore. It's all done with just a click of the finger. What's going on on the past the Camp Palo section, almost to the West Bridgewater line? The, you know, there is a new Family Dollar store there. Is, that's, is that West actually, Bridgewater. that's West Bridgewater. That's West okay. Bridgewater. But, um, you know, I, I know we have the restriction with the supermarket with you Shaw's. Know, yeah. Shaw's mm -hmm. So that's still out there. But I heard there might be some activity in the old Guido O'Shea's. I don't know if that's information that's gone further now, but I've heard well, stuff Well, it's gone through zoning. Okay. Okay, it's gone through permitting, it's gone through licensing. Mm -hmm. uh, we're just waiting for the state to award the uh, liquor license. Okay. And once that's done, the renovations will start, and the perfect place will be a new function hall at the old, let's, let's go up Siciliano. the road. Uh, Siciliano's, Guido O'Shea's, Reed's Steakhouse, and now the perfect place. Perfect place. I like that. The perfect place. Like and it'll be a function hall and it can hold up to 475 people. Which is very needed in the city, for sure. We, we have good function halls, don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. We have Shaw Center, we have Massasoit Conference Center, mm -hmm. and now the Santana, Santana in the old Maple Alleys. That's, That's right. what we would remember it as. So the more the merrier because they're, they're, uh, there, needs to be, there needs to be functions. I see all the time people, well, where's a good place to have a function? And unless you're a member of the Enterprise Club, Right. Or a member of the VFW or a member of the Polish White yeah. Eagles or Potoci. You, you need and a I'm commercial a member of place. them all. So of course I, you are. And there I don't go, go to any of them, but I'm yeah. there, you know? Yeah. I mean. <laughs> um, so anything that I haven't talked about that you can talk about that's in the works? Uh, well, I, you know, I, I, I never want to get you in trouble with the, with the, no, with the boss. No, you do. Don't get me in trouble. I, you know, I remember uh, the main thing that I need people to know and realize is that I am not paid by any taxpayers' dollars from the citizens of Brockton. I am strictly paid uh, by the federal government. Okay. But I work for everybody in the city of Brockton. Mm -hmm. And that does not just mean the mayor's office, that means for the mayor's office and the constituents of the Brockton themselves. Um, if somebody has any questions, they don't have to call the mayor's office, they can call me direct. Mm -hmm. And if it's got anything to do with business or commercial properties, uh, or even zoning requirements, they're welcome to call me direct. Mm -hmm. And I can answer the question probably a lot faster than the City Hall can get back to them because they get flooded with calls. A lot of them are redundant, but mm -hmm. they have to return the calls. I myself, uh, I'm always at the ready. I have my phone with me. I work seven days a week. That's one thing I've always done. Uh, I have that disease, workaholism, mm -hmm. because I'm having the best time of my life. Um, well, you know, it, it kind of all ties in, Gary, to what you've done. Your whole life, before you did this job. But I was a volunteer then. Now you they're did. actually paying me, so now I gotta work triple the time. <laughs> yeah, so instead of the double zeros, they're the double point oh one because if you are working seven days a week and I hope your wife is good with that. She well she was used to it, right? Yeah, right. Well, remember I've been doing this for forty five years or more and uh you well, know your dad uh, taught my dad you. taught me and that's the way we grew up. I mean uh, my, my father was a political person here in the city of Brockton, and while he was out campaigning, he had a, my brother and myself over at some charity handing out food or, or handing out gifts on Christmas time or something. But we were always doing something uh, for charity or volunteering for something to clean up Brockton or whatever he, he couldn't do, we did for him. And that's the way I thought everybody was brought up, but mm -hmm. I guess not. <laughs> I was thinking of you the other day. I went to uh, the Lithuanian Heritage Day that yes. John Drzinskis put on. And I'm a Lithuanian Knights, boy, and with, I missed with it. With the Knights of Lithuania. They did it in Avon because since St. Casimir's mm -hmm. closed, most of those parishioners went over there. Yes. It was a very nice night. Maria Bisankowskis, who I went to high school with, she was part of the thing. The food was good, and they're keeping the culture, culture alive over there because there are so many great groups over the course of time in Brockton that have oh, built yes. this city. Yeah, absolutely. You know, different waves of immigrants. Well, they all have their sections of and the city. And a lot of them <laughs> are the new business people of today. You have a lot of entrepreneurs out there right now that small businesses in Brockton, which which uh, we heard last night, uh, one of the counselors was talking about how small businesses are bigger than all the big businesses put together. Yes. And that's, if you think about Brockton and you think, uh, if you looked at the pictures back in the day of Main Street and how many different businesses there were at, at different points in time, it's 
coming back that way in a different way. Uh, and it's coming back really strong. I'll, I'll let one thing out of the bag. Okay. Just, I, I have received the call that a radio station would like to move to Brock, and I'm looking for some acreage right now. Okay. Acreage. Okay. Okay. So. Cool. Something for you to look forward big, to. Big missing piece of the puzzle. Yeah, absolutely. Since X, uh, BET changed to XBR and they went off so, the air and yeah. then they became a Haitian radio station, which is all well and good, but it didn't sustain. Right. That's what I miss in the morning because I, I'm always been multimedia. You, you, right. you get we up in the morning. Lost CAV. I mean, uh, we've, CAV. We've, Funny story about CAV. One of the most popular stations in the country, country music, music. Yep. in Brockton. No one ever thought it was going to be big. It was huge. huge. And when that station sold, when that half of the combo sold, it sold for way more money than the AM site sold. Well, because the land was worth a lot of money. The land was worth, but the signal, the signal, signal. was the oh, signal sure. was stronger. So that's good news. We we look forward to that because, you know, everything is you know read a newspaper, listen to the radio, watch TV cable TV, it all ties together, and now everything's coming down to watching it on a screen this big, um, you know, with, with, I don't know, I, I like the 55-inch monitor. I'd rather watch we, it than, than Don't than think that this. this didn't go unsolicited, because I do have another radio station, and this might be competitive. Oh, okay. And uh, if they're fighting for the same lot, that, that, that could be a problem. So I'm, I'm out there searching, and that's why I can't say too much, because... Okay, next time you come I, on, I just, we'll, we'll you'll, know more. You'll know the two spots and the two radio stations that are coming in. Sounds good to me. <laughs> so anything else that you want to cover that I haven't asked you about? Well, um, yes. Um, there, uh, we just celebrated one-year anniversary for Elvera's. Mm -hmm. um, Saturday night, uh, she had an open house after one year. Uh, it was a very successful night. Um, I went and uh, helped her get a uh, beer and wine license, and uh, uh, she was there, uh, started at 4 o'clock, and she went on till midnight, and the place was jammed the whole time, and everybody, again, had a smile on their face. And she's pretty much come to be the place downtown to go to. Uh, she's become a destination. Uh, people there's, from all over the city come downtown just to go to her. There's wonderful stuff there that I'm not supposed to eat, eat but I but, do anyway. And I'm not going to tell you. I mean, well, you just told everybody. No. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, no. I, I, get in I, 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 I ration out the desserts that I'm not supposed to eat, but that, there's, there's a cookie over there. That well, so as you walk in, there it is, right? It's right there, so you can't, you can't get away from it. So, um, and we're looking at also a juice bar coming downtown. Mm -hmm. uh, it, um, it will be a collaboration between one of the barbershops downtown mm -hmm. and uh, right next door to it, he will also have this juice bar as well. Mm. Um, I didn't realize how many health nuts were here in the city of Brockton, but I guess there's quite a few. And uh, she's going to be doing the energy drinks, um, the uh, smoothies, mm -hmm. um, the, the um, curd drinks, yeah, salads, things of that nature. She'll also have sandwiches, mm -hmm. uh, but they will mostly be health foods, and she'll have the nutrients also available there as well. So, um, yes, this will be called uh, Sheila's Juiceforium. Okay. And um, um, Marvelous Cuts uh, has oh, okay. invited her to nice. come in there, and uh, we're meeting on Tuesday, so this is in the works as well. As there is many things, and there's so many things, Mark, we can go on from there for two hours. Oh, we got the, we got the 30. You're the only one I do 30 with I for know, the most part. I know, I know. So we, we have a good time. Uh, we do. We okay, do. We so do. just one more time, phone number, how to get in touch with you, what's uh, email or whatever. Uh, uh, but uh, you're, you're a phone guy. You uh, talk to people. I talk to people. I'm always at the ready, so I'm going to give you my cell phone. I, I even give people my home phone. Uh, but I'm never home, so I must as well just give you my cell phone. Okay. Uh, uh, Actually, my name is Gary E. Leonard, and I am the Main Streets Manager here in the city of Brockton. I am uh, working out of the Brockton 21st Century Corp., which is at, located at 50 School Street in Brockton. That's right next to City Hall. And my phone number there is 508-586-0021, extension 115. And again, my cell phone number is 508-802-2315. Thanks, Gary. Always a pleasure. Mark, thank you so much, Keep and I can't wait for our next visit. Same here. Okay. Let's make it an hour. Okay. <laughs> uh, we might do that. Yeah. Um, you're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Linda, your host. Stay tuned for more events, places, people, and faces right here in the City of Champions.